Hello there, my name is Guy Deeming. I am uh, one of the specialist orthodontists at Queensway Orthodontics. I wanted just to take a few moments to share how the um, how our local colleagues can refer patients to us within the NHS. One of the main reasons for this is that we've been asked by our NHS commissioners to uh, encourage and make sure that we're using the correct form and gathering the correct information from our referrals as we move eventually towards an electronic referral system. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that in just a few moments. But you can see on the screen in front of you our website, which is always a good place to start. And you can go to the dentist zone uh, tab along the top. And then on there, you'll see the online referral form option. And what, I'm going to show you the manual form first. And you can go there and if you click NHS referral, uh, download you can download the correct NHS form and this is a PDF document you can then download it to uh, whichever workstation or PC you're working on now I suspect a lot of you will already have done this and I know that a lot of the software management systems will now allow you to import these documents or documents like this as a template and then you can actually set the fields such as name and date of birth etc to pre-populate automatically from the patient record so it will save you a huge amount of hassle and time if you ha can do that or if you haven't done that already I would encourage you to speak to um, your IT supplier and software suppliers to see how easy that is to do because it makes the whole job an awful lot simpler. But let me show you the form. I'm going to actually bring up a copy of the form here. And I'm opening this just in Adobe so you can pre-populate it. And what is very simple, really, although it looks like there's an awful lot of fields, it's really quite straightforward, particularly if you pre-populate. Um, and the first section is dead easy. It is simply the uh, the basic information, today's date, who you are, a signature or a sign uh, an electronic signature, the address of the practice, the postcode, telephone number. We really are trying to encourage people to use NHS.net email addresses. We are very close to being paper free and of course we can then communicate via email. GDC number is always helpful, just a cross reference colleagues who may have a similar name and the date of decision to refer is often going to be today's date but if there is a difference in that time um, it's important that we do know that so that we can make sure patients um, don't time out in terms of their referral. Perhaps the most important one in there is actually the nhs.net email address but again as I say if you can pre-populate this uh, with your software supply that will be fantastically helpful to you because um, that will all be done automatically. Similarly, section two is the patient information. And again, if you can get this pre-populated, that's fantastic. You'll notice here that I am on Adobe so that what that allows me to do is to just electronically fill that in um, if I want to with little fields like so, which makes it very straightforward if you haven't got a software that allows you to pre-populate. Again, all pretty obvious stuff. Um, again, we're very, very keen to make sure we do have mobiles and telephone, uh, mobiles and email addresses rather, because those are by far and away the most efficient way of communicating with patients. If they are a child, we would ask that you include details of their parents' contact. If they're between the ages of 16 and 18, it's sometimes sensible and reasonable to put both on if the they are a sort of mature and sensible 16 17 year old then by all means put their mobile and email address as well social medical history you know there may not be much in here if, you know if there's nothing to report just put nad or nothing to report however if for example it's a patient who may be in care it's very useful to know that so that we've got some ideas to how we're going to uh, manage some of the logistics of that as particularly people move between various different um, foster homes for example Current dental oral health and relevant dental history, again, fairly obvious, but if they've got sixes of poor prognosis or you've just done a restoration on a deeply filled six or whatever it might be, or trauma is another popular one, please pop some very simple details in there. Just question mark, prognosis, upper level one, trauma, RCT, 2018, whatever it might be. Doesn't need to be a fully fledged all the best, but if, it's, if there's anything like that, please just pop it in there. But we certainly don't need you to give a full description because this is designed to be super, super easy. Um, bear in mind, this is the NHS form. It's not our form, but they're asking just for verification that they have had the appropriate um, prevention advice. I think that's very sensible. And that they've had bite wings and so on and so forth according to that. And you can see that here. Section three, it is what it is. It's really just a way of just acknowledging that, that, that some of those core questions have been asked and answered, that the patient is of an appropriate age, which is under 18 at the point of referral that if there are any x-rays they're enclosed or indeed if the paper form is sent the x-rays are available digitally 
that they've got clean and healthy teeth. The exception to that, and you can see the hashtag here, the exception being if they are considered for advice only so that you're just looking for advice, for example, regarding interceptive extractions. And the third one here, the fourth one rather, is that the patient is at the right stage of dental development in the permanent dentition, again, unless it is an early referral, where you're looking at, for example, pushing a tooth across the bite in the mixed dentition. The patient should also have not had a previous uh, course of comprehensive orthodontic treatment. However, that does not include those patients that have had early treatment with, for example, a URA in the mixed dentition, they can have that and then a subsequent course of treatment in the permanent dentition. If there is a specific situation where they may have had some NHS treatment previously um, and you're concerned or you feel like it's justified, then please do reach out to, uh, to me or one of my colleagues directly uh, and we can have a conversation, uh, give a little bit more kind of thought to whether there's a case to be made that we can take to the commissioners to ask for that second course of funding. Section four is much more about the clinical um, and the section four refers to those cases where you are referring before the permanent dentition and it makes particular reference towards trauma, towards disturbed eruption sequence, supernumerary teeth, uh, advice regarding interceptive extractions, cross bites, etc, etc. You only need to fill in box four if the patient is in the mixed dentition um, and uh, not in the permanent dentition for definitive treatment. So normally box four will be empty or section four will be empty. For section five, comprehensive treatment, again, we just wanna check that the patient's motivated, understands their responsibilities, and understands that we will need to make an assessment against the IOTN. Caveats as always, if they're just being referred for interceptive extraction to poor prognosis sixes, then some of those things may not apply, but just make a little note that, you know, patient doesn't want fixed braces, but I would like advice about the sixes, for example. Section six is a sort of rudimentary simplified IOTN. It looks horrible and very intimidating, but it really isn't, I promise. Um, and what you really need to do is identify, if you can, which category your patient fits into. So do they have more than one tooth missing? Do they have impacted teeth? Do they have a big overjet? Do they have a big reverse overjet? If the answer is no to none of those, um, you then move on to section uh, IOTN four. Do they have one tooth missing, moderate overjet? And as soon as you tick one of these boxes, as you move down through five to four to three, then your job is done. So for example, you may end up just ticking the box which has two millimeters to four millimeter contact point displacement, which will put them into an IOTN three. You can then have a stab if you want to at the aesthetic component of the IOTN. The best way of doing that is to download the easy IOTN app from the BOS. It's free, it's on the Apple store or the Android store, and it's a really nice way of looking at the aesthetic component. It is not essential. All I would ask that if they are in a category three here, that you really uh, have that brief conversation to say that you may not qualify for treatment. So that if they indeed do not qualify for treatment, that conversation is much easier when they come to the clinic and there's much less disappointment and potential acrimony when it comes to explaining that. Section seven only applies if they're being referred into secondary care. So that would be relatively rare, but it might be if there's severe hyperdontia, multiple impacted teeth, severe jaw discrepancies requiring surgery, or indeed cleft lip and palate. Um, and then the final section is where do you actually want the referral to go? Most of the time it's going to be specialist practice, i.e. the Queensway group, occasionally community, although we don't have much of that on Teesside and County Durham, and occasionally hospital services, um, which would be uh, obviously James Cook for the most part. Um, it gives you a little bit of a kind of a, a pocket guide there as to what is uh, the appropriate cases for each particular setting. And that is it. So it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't because all you really need to do is to pre-populate who you are, who the patient is, and then really there's no more than half a dozen ticks to get the job done and allow that patient to be referred. The other thing I'm just gonna show you quickly is that on our website, you can do the uh, referral online if you want to. And this particular form replicates the uh, same sections and the same process as it is on that paper form. So if you prefer to make your pro um, profiles, your, the profiles, your um, referrals online, you're more than welcome to do so. The questions are all the same and that will allow you to do that in, a, in, in, in that fashion if that's your thing. But as I say, I think the best way of doing it is to integrate it as a template into your software management system. So I hope that helps. The main takeaways are we're here to help and support you. 
don't worry, we're never going to start, you know, getting uh, upset or sending referrals back with a stroppy letter. If you're struggling or you don't know what to put, just put what you can. If we need some more information, we'll reach out to you or one of your team members in your practices. Do look at the software options. Do use NHS.net email addresses and do please provide us with email addresses and mobile phones for your patients. If you prefer to refer electronically, you can do that. If you would like to refer patients to it privately, again, the most straightforward way is to either direct patients to our website so that they can refer themselves or there is a private referral form online as well. So thank you for your time. I hope that's helpful. We'll post this uh, video onto our uh, website and onto our YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and have a little look, you'll find it there and we'll share the links um, to the various pages on the websites and the BOS IOTN app uh, alongside this video in due course. Okay, take care. Thanks again.